My name is Jérôme Vigne. I'm a director for app innovation at Microsoft. So I work on the Azure cloud and I'm specifically focused on power and utilities accounts in the Northeast. I personally think it doesn't start with technology. It's, it's more of a, is our company or this organization ready to embrace um, this, this journey? And the tools that you use are just along the journey to, to, to get you to where you want to go. But it's also muscles that you have to continuously progress. So if we've been talking about digital transformation ever since I joined Microsoft 10 years ago, when Office went to the cloud, um, and now more and more of uh, automation is coming to the Azure platform. Um, now that Gen AI is coming into the workplace and co-pilots, we're restarting to talk again about the next revolution, the way we work in a more digital way. They're the ones who are going to really enable us to get to a more sustainable future, a more equitable future where we can all benefit from uh, carbon neutral uh, energy sources. And in the tool sets that can be used that are digitally native, um, like Plexos for simulations or like a strong data lake strategy in your, with your cloud provider, that's, I think, where you'll find the answers, the intersection between the deep industry domain expertise of the utilities when that gets matched with the power of uh, large cloud providers. I think that's where we'll seek uh, the answers we're looking for. So Plexus has an offer, the Plexus Cloud, where um, you can consume Plexus basically like you would consume Office 365, and then it's managed by Energy Exemplar uh, in Azure. The immediate benefits are just the nature of the cloud, where you get as much compute as you need. It's elastic, so when you don't run simulation, it can simmer down, it can burst out when you need to do a lot of simulation. But I think where we're going to see a lot more focus and acceleration is also into the integration of how every stakeholder that needs to either prepare data for the Plexus calculation engine or consume what's coming out of Plexus are also somehow going to be embedded into the broader um, Microsoft cloud world. So specifically, that would be Power BI in the way you consume your reports. And in the future, we are, we are working on launching Copilot for Power BI, which will be your chatbots that helps you make sense of your Power BI reports. So there'll be a natural marriage for these two um, technologies. And then in the way you prepare these data sets, if you're not already using Plexus data sets, but bringing your own data to it, you are using more data science or data engineering focused tools that let you do ETL pipelines or Jupyter notebooks um, that will help wrangle that data. There'll also be co-pilots in, in fabrics that will help you build these scripts, coach you how to do it in the most efficient way. Um, so it's a nice marriage where you get the benefits of the cloud directly from Plexus, but then you also get the ancillary benefits of being in a cloud native uh, workbench. We, with the ambitious goals that all of us are setting to ourselves in, in terms of transitioning to, to, to green, I think the approaches that we used to have, we're realizing they're not going to scale in the way to get there by whatever it will end up being. And so if we really want to accelerate finding answers, I think we need to embrace new technologies. And that's where I believe the intersection of cloud solutions like Plexus running in the cloud, you know, also being at a place where we're ready to embrace AI, that's going to be where, where we can start getting answers faster make better decisions and deploy capital at the right places in a grid so that we do get to a reliable grid where we can really harness the efficiencies. Oh, I've loved working with them. Uh, yeah. They, I think I got invited, I got introduced not even that long ago. I had heard of Plexos. A lot of my clients mentioned it. It had been uh, a solution where we're like, well, that sounds like this would be right for the cloud. Um, that's, that's how I initially got in touch. And then we have an industry-focused team. They introduced me. And uh, when I got invited to be the keynote speaker, I, well, I, originally I was invited, do you want to speak? And then I was like, sure. And then I saw the Gen it was a keynote speaker. So, okay. But yeah. And uh, <laughs> I've enjoyed it greatly. And it's been great to work with Mark. I'm looking forward to work with Robert. Um, and I hope our companies can work uh, closer together. Yeah, I would. Um, 
It was refreshing because usually the conference I attend are absolutely massive, like Distributech earlier this year, or in the Microsoft conferences where we also have around 17,000 people. This is such a much more charming setting, more manageable sites where you can actually talk to everybody, uh, make meaningful new connections. And also you have time to talk about the ideas or concepts or approaches. Um, and I love the, I love this space because the utilities don't compete with each other. The ISOs, the RTOs don't compete to, with each other. They're all looking for the same answers in different jurisdictions, but that can harness such a, or foster such a good uh, idea exchange. And this conference has been, has been great for exactly that. Yeah, I think generative AI, if it's done the right way, we could all use it in our everyday, at work, uh, maybe even in our private life to help us solve mundane tasks that we don't love to do in a much more faster way or completely trust the model to do it for us. And I think that's how we all get time back in our everyday to spend with our spouses, our children, our parents and, and get to a 30-hour 30, 30 week work. Thank you.